In this video I want to show you how to set up a top field PVR from scratch. So if you've got one of these, um, one of the Australian model TAP compatible TMS top fields and there's a list of them there, then hopefully this will help you to get your system up and running to uh, tune the channels, install the network and install some taps. And this will help you get the most use and enjoyment out of your machine. So when you first connect your top field to your TV and start it up, this is probably what you're going to see, something like this. Slightly different on some models, but much the same. You can access this screen by pressing the menu button from the live TV display, and you'll come back here from time to time to change settings and to carry out uh, low level operations on the machine. There are better ways of doing it, as we'll see later with taps, but this is where you should start. And finally, before we commence the installation, we'll just have a look at the system information in this system status display. So you'll see there that this is running the January 2016 firmware, which is the most recent one available. So we'll just back out of this and go back to the main menu. So in the installation menu, um, prior to recording this video, I did a factory reset, which is here in the system recovery menu. I can't show you that happening because it changed the output video settings which were incompatible with my capture device so I had to reset them back to what was compatible and um, everything else is as per factory defaults. So you're just going to have to take my word for that. But what we can do is just reset the service list which is all the channels if there are any there. So we just say yes to that so everything's cleared from there now and we'll also format the hard drive which will put all the um, directory structure and initialization of the top field system onto the hard drive. Uh, that's complete now so we'll reverse out of that and um, back to the main menu again. Um, we're just going to go and check in the recordings menu now just to make sure everything is in fact clear on the hard drive. So we go into this list of recorded programs. You can see there's nothing there and you press the tab key to go through the other directories that are there for music um, where your taps will reside and video files that the top field can play. So there's nothing in any of those so it's a clean sheet to start with. Uh, while we're here we'll just quickly look at the um, main menu settings, recordings we've just seen. The entertainment menu I'm not going to spend any time in here but it's just where you can play music and videos from just back out of that one the main settings screen we just go in here and um, we'll, we'll just set the time settings now while we're while we're here uh, auto is fine usually um, we're at uh, GMT plus 10 hours on the east coast of Australia so we'll change that to 10 and uh, where I am in Brisbane, in Queensland, we don't have daylight saving, so we'll turn that off. So back out of that one again. Um, parental control you can use if you wish. Uh, the AV output is where I had to come in before and change to a 576p setting so I could capture it. Everything else I'm leaving on defaults except for the Dolby Digital setting. If you're connecting your top field up with HDMI to a um, AV receiver which can do the decoding. You'll want to switch this to uh, multi-channel which is top field speak for bitstream audio. So if you want to receive Dolby Digital sound where it's available, uh, use that. Otherwise you can leave it on PCM and, let, and um, the top here will do the decoding. The recording menu, I'm just going to leave that all on defaults because um, when we install the taps they're going to take over this um, these functions directly. So we'll just uh, back out of there. And in the playback menu again the top field um, basic controls are here but we're going to install some taps that will modify these and give you much better control over how the machine works. So we're sort of finished with that settings now. So we're going to go in and do the installation and first thing we're going to do is search for the channels. So we're just going to go straight into that and 
I'm happy to use the auto settings. Uh, we've got an antenna connected and we've also got a network cable connected too for that matter. But anyway, we'll just start the search and away it goes. And um, it's going to take some time. I've, the top fill's not this fast. I've sped the video up a bit so that uh, it's not too boring. But pretty soon we'll have everything scanned in. There it is. Um, we just press OK and it saves all of those channels. And now we have some TV. Uh, next thing I want to do is uh, set up the network. So we'll go into the network settings menu and click OK on IP settings and you'll see this. Now if you've got DHCP activated uh, it will pick up an IP address straight away. In my case I've told it to use the IP address 192.168.1.89 and I've done that because I want the top field to be on the same IP address every time it starts up. And the reason for having a fixed IP uh, will become clear later on. But uh, this is how I force the top field to have the same IP each time. This is a, a snap from my router config screen. So most routers will have this facility. You just associate an IP address with a MAC address and save that. And DHCP will give you the same IP every time. So we finished that setup and the last thing we just do here is enable the web server. Just highlight that and press the right arrow button. Same with the FTP server. Uh, in the user info, this is your username and password. The default top field pin code is 0000. As you'll see there and the user ID is guest. So just make a note of those um, as well as that IP address 192.168.1.89 we'll need that later. So we're almost finished here except for one thing I just noticed the time settings still seem to be wrong so we better go and fix that up. So we'll just back out of that menu and go back to the settings menu and find the time setting again and see what's gone wrong there. So just go up to that one press OK on that and we'll have a look. Um, all I'm going to do is just switch it from auto back to manual um, and then put it back on auto and it should pick up the time from the network. Okay, there it is. It's found it. Um, the only thing we need to do now is fix that time offset back to 10 hours for Australian East Coast. Uh, once we've got that set, everything should be right. Uh, okay, so that's right. Today's date is April the 3rd. It is quarter past 12 thereabouts. So we're finished there now. We can back out of that and um, move on to the next step. So here we are at our live TV screen for the first time and um, the electronic program guide you'll see there's got lots of gaps in there and um, I'm not too worried about that just yet because we're going to replace the electronic program guide anyway. What I want to do now is have a look at this TV channels list which you can bring up by pressing the OK key. And what I do is delete all of the duplicate channels, all of the shopping channels and any channels which are standard definition versions of the high definition channels. So in this list we're going to use the white button on the remote to get rid of the ones we don't need. So just looking at the list here, uh, one is OK, we're going to keep that one. Um, the next one we're going to look at is ABC and it's okay. We're going to keep that one because there is no high definition version of that. But SBS one uh, is a simulcast of the high definition channel. So we use the white button and we go to delete and say yes. And so SBS one is now gone. Channel seven's okay. Now channel nine Brisbane, we know it is now simulcast on a high definition channel. So we're going to get rid of that one as well. Uh, yes, so it's gone. Uh, 10 digital, same thing. There's now 10 high definition, exactly the same programming, but on a high definition channel. We don't want the standard definition one cluttering up the place. So I'm just going to work through the list now and get rid of this, the excess. Like there's two versions of one, we got rid of it. And I've hurried things through a fair bit here because it's getting a bit boring, but you can see I'm getting rid of shopping channels. Um, excess ones, repeats and 
general rubbish that I don't want. Everyone will have their own preferences with what they do here. I just prefer to clean up all the channel list and leave them all in one place. Other people use the favourites list, which you can see there. You can mark channels with the green button and put them into a favourites group uh, and give that names and things. Um, I just don't see the need for it myself, uh, but you're quite welcome to try it yourself if you like. Uh, so we're nearly finished uh, going through all that list there now. Um, I think we've got the last of them. So we're just going to exit out of that. And um, now we've pretty much finished the basic setup. Uh, we've got all our TV channels sorted out. We've got the network connected. And we're ready to start installing some taps. Back soon. <laughs>